welcome back. This episode is absolutely exciting. It's actually so exciting, I decided to do the intro afterwards. We had to break out the net today, y'all. We got a big old carbon fiber bubba net. It's one piece, the thing's like more expensive than this John boat. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Big fish, we throw in swim baits and Texas rigs. Man, we had a lot of fun with the Jackal Ganterelle, specifically this guy right here. This is the Junior. If you guys want to grab any of these, check out Carl's Bait and Tackle. You can get them for roughly 20 bucks, plus or minus, right, if you are a Carl's Club member like us. This is the Spawn Gill, I believe, all right? It's a little darker, and you've noticed it's got some curb rash. It's been bashed against the boat a few times, and there's no fins on the side. The thing still has kept great action, caught some big fish for us over the last probably couple years. We've had this one specifically in the tackle box. We're fishing some usually clear water, but a slight stain after some storms today, and so that's why we broke out that color. Otherwise, if you want to know our favorite, at least my favorite, Devin's behind the camera. She was catching giants on that one right there. This is the ghost gill. I absolutely love this lifelike color, you guys. For the crystal clear water, I think this is one of the best options. It just mimics exactly what these bluegill look like. You're gonna get a lot of fish on this, but not just little bites. You're gonna get some giants, man, as we proved today. Also, I figured since we're talking about it, I would mention real quickly before we get into the fishing, we're about to hit the water, the larger size jackal gan trail. I wanna say this guy's like two and a half ounces, and I have not had as much luck personally. I've had friends that swear by the larger size, might bring in some larger fish from further away. You know, you break out those big swim baits, they've got that presence in the water, and you'll definitely get a lot of followers. But as far as hookups and amount of fish caught, we love that junior size. Here's just a little size comparison. This is a different color, and I even forget what this one's called. They all work great. Absolutely gotta throw it, man. And, and just to find the bite today, we're throwing the Texas rig a lot. We're throwing the new color of the Bandito bug. This is sprayed lettuce. So if you guys want to grab any of these, it's going to be at guggensquad.com. Use code Weston to save and grab you about 30 packs, man. You are not going to want to fish anything else after you grab that sprayed lettuce. It is sick for all kinds of water clarity. It's dark. It's got some flash with the purple. The thing's absolutely flawless. So we're not going to delay anymore. Let's get you guys out on the water and start to catch them. Go ahead and give it a little bump. Got the first one. Not too bad. Oh, sweet. Oh, <laughs> he's not that big. He's just pulling us under the boat. <laughs> All right, let me flip him up here. Come on, work this way. Nice. That's a two and a half to three. That's probably three, actually. He's, he's looking pretty good. I don't know, man. They seem to like sprayed lettuce. I'm all about it myself. Swipe up if y'all wanna get in on this action. Look at that color. Look at that color. Welcome back to another fishing vlog, y'all. I don't know if this thing is on camera because my GoPro just said SD card error, but this is the first fish of the day out here on the Texas rig. Bandito bug, sprayed lettuce. We've been throwing that a little bit and absolutely loving it. Solid two and a half for right here. Gonna go ahead and get them back in the water and see what else we can find over here in the reeds today. We shall see you, buddy. Bye. Anytime now. Oh, right after you said that, huh? <laughs> what do we got? He's staying low. He's staying low. Okay, he's a couple pounds. You got him. It was a little loose. It was a little loose. Yeah, it's, it's way too loose. Yeah, it's way too loose. <laughs> yeah nice almost as big as the first one. Second fish in the boat just about as big a fat they're all fat they're just like feeding up post spawn style i got the pliers out somewhere i think and that's two on the bandito bug man the texas rig is hitting gonna get him back in the water he's gonna do a little jump cool <laughs> we need some sixes and sevens you can have yours pretty much like cranked down to where you can hardly rotate it anymore. I mean, I've always got it cranked down to where I like can't even turn it anymore. You have heavier line than me, but if you just come off of it a little, that way they can pull it without snapping it. If they like really make a run right at the boat where there's not much line out, then that's that's better. Like, especially if you're setting the hook on a Texas rig, it slipped because you had loosened it up yesterday. You want it to be tight. Kinda hit the... That's one. They're just staying low lately. Like they are fighting. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Everything over two today so far. That's another two and a half. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, <laughs> fish number four. She's got three to my one. That's the smallest one so far, though. That's like a pound and a quarter, pound and a half. Where'd the bigs go? Littlest one. <laughs> Five fish in the boat. <laughs> I just saw that fish come and take this. Yep. Do you need to set the hook again? Like maybe it's not it's a good hook set? It's little? It's little? Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. She like, just lost him. That's funny. <laughs> Double up. But she didn't really set the hook. It was a small one. 
fish number five on the bandito exclusively this morning this thing is crushing it for us lately that's why we're throwing it i mean it's sometimes it's funny like new subscribers and stuff are always like all he ever throws is one bait but it's just like the time of year a certain bait works so good that you just throw it non-stop i mean if you want to catch fish you go with your confidence bait that's working your spring baits in the spring your summer baits in the summer you got your winter stuff you finesse it down right your top waters in the summer you got the bandito bug pretty much year round to be honest but there's not much more fun than a texas rig bite absolutely we're on five fish now trying to bump it up for you guys see if we can catch us a big one today Ooh, that might be the ticket so this way along this edge there's bluegill over there there might be some bass but so devin just switched it up for a moment we're both doing the texas rigs but we're getting those quick hits those bluegill bites so there's bluegill actively trying to feed up against the reeds too the bass are eating those bluegill so devin switched it up to the jackal Gantrell jr she's throwing that i think it's one and a half ounce uh, jackal Gantrell bait we've caught some monsters on that thing i wouldn't be surprised if she gets the next fish and definitely would not be surprised if she catches the biggest fish of the day on that but regardless at least showcase that for you guys and tell you why we're throwing it since we're getting these hits on the bluegill and the bass absolutely love snacking on some bluegill so texas rigs and swim baits today that has been the name of the game lately it's just the spring fever i might net them for you on that unless it's noticeably small just because the treble hooks and oh something just swirled on it i was about to say oh this could be good this could be good oh it doesn't look that big it doesn't look that big i just saw it It looked like it's, it was on its side it might have hooked it weird or it might have like bit it weird it could be good i don't know oh he's but not bad treble hooks let's get him let's get him wow wow oh okay well that's like a four pounder what just happened oh god oh god oh god what the <laughs> i mean i think that's still four pliers on deck thank you uh-huh all right guys first solid fish of the day those first few were definitely solid fish but this girl is noticeably bigger probably go ahead and put her on the scale we're thinking maybe give or take around four pounds but that first fish on that gantrell jr what an awesome catch oh we are terrible oh it's kilograms oh. i was about to say so that thing's almost five pounds okay there we go that looks better uh-oh uh-oh dev with another come on seriously come on. no way another five pounder <laughs> three in two days what guys this is my third five pounder in two days I don't even think I've like absorbed that yet. That's just absolute craziness. But we are on the hunt for something in that six to seven pound range. We know they're out here. So let's go ahead and try for one of those. Okay, well it only takes one fish to make me want to throw something like that, so I'm going to throw the uh, same bait, you guys, except this is that ghost gill color. We like these colors a lot. By the way, you'll notice the side fins, I think on both of these, are broken off. If you're hitting stumps and if you're casting into the thick stuff, you're definitely going to chip some uh, fins off, but it still has the same great swimming action with or without them. And if anything, it might just help link up with more fish because it's not something else protruding from the body, getting away from the hooks or getting in the way of the hooks, I should say. I tie it to the top line tie here, guys, but I think this guy right here, so that you can even add a little weight if you wanted to, to the nose and you can kind of work this thing down lower. So there is that option because he just stays subsurface. I find the faster you reel, like maybe I'll make a couple quick reel twitches, it likes to dive down a little bit and then I can work it slow again because I like to have him diving down just a hair. Yeah, that's about it. I just pretty much slow crank this thing and give it a little half spin of the reel handle every once in a while and usually get bit right afterwards the bait kind of does like a 180 but if you're fishing this thing close to the reeds close to the cover you're absolutely going to get hit so i'm going to rig this thing up now so this is funny i just brought that up about the bandito bug but like last spring everyone was saying all i ever throw is this jackal cantarelle and we got so many people wanting to throw this specific swim bait because this is a great swim bait to start your uh, swim bait journey off with it's one and a half ounces so you can get away with this even on some of the rods you probably already own you know like a 7.2 medium heavy fast action it's actually a great pairing but what you want to do is make sure that uh, you don't have like an extra fast tip yeah so there we go palomar knot i recommend 15 pound fluorocarbon minimum on these things because you're probably going to get some big hits and you may have to rip it out from uh behind a tree stump you get caught in every once in a while also these guys you can grab over at carl's bait and tackle and i think if you're a club member you can get them for pretty cheap they're like somewhere around 20 bucks they are affordable when you look at swim baits across the board so it's just a less intimidating way to get into swim baits since it's probably like a 
four to five inch bait instead of like you know those six seven eight on up to like 10 inch swim baits that people are throwing and you see bluegill like this in your lakes probably all the time in your ponds and whatnot and so you know those bass are eating this this is a treat a small little mcnugget for those big bass right so they're eating stuff like this every day do not be afraid to throw them cast them parallel to the bank uh, in springtime and you know in summertime you're gonna have to probably get out early or at that sunset to get the bite for uh, the swim baits but i suppose that's probably enough tips you probably want to see us catch more fish on these things so let's just get it in the water maybe Devin just got super lucky maybe maybe she just got super lucky Devin says she wants to set me up for a golden opportunity since she already caught a big one. So we're going to hit this corner and I'm going to cast straight down this reed line. That is what you would consider the perfect cast. If there was going to be a fish, it would probably be right here along the reeds feeding up on the bluegill in the shallows. I'm throwing this on a muscle rod today. So like I would probably rather have this on like a even the go-to rod or the reaction rod. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to kind of play these fish out and work in their favor you know if they start pulling i might loosen that drag a little bit just so that rod doesn't bend out those treble hooks you really got to have a little bit more play when you're working with some treble hook baits so a rod with a little bit more give and the tip is going to help when they're head shaking that way it just kind of plays them with them a little bit and doesn't bend out those hooks also the drag if you're using something like really heavy gear like i'm using it's going to be easy to just rip those hooks right out of their skin so you also want to maybe loosen that drag back a little bit if you are using some stuff like i have got rigged up today yeah, I just also don't know. I feel like the Texas rig is going to be... Uh, I just kind of want to throw the Texas rig. I'll let you catch them. You got the color that worked, and I just think there's good opportunity for numbers and size on the Texas rig, too. Got him. Ah, there we go. Oh, I thought it was a little bit bigger. He's maybe two pounds. Let me see. He's going to start pulling again here in a second. Yeah, he's not even two. I don't think he's close, though. He's close, right on the reeds, right on the fall. Set the hook, bada bing, bada boom. I'd say a pound and, I bet you that one goes for a pound and three quarters. Yeah? Bigger? Nice. Fast and then pause and got a hit, all right. Oh, that's a good one too, that's a good one. That's a good one, nice and easy, nice and easy. That's a good one, that's a good one. All right, sick. Oh, that yes. thing's over four. That might be another five plus, babe. That's a big one. Good fish. Jackal Gantrell doing work. Holy cow. <laughs> Is this real life? That was cool. Just like how you talk about, like, give it a few good cranks and then let it pause because that it just literally does that 180 and it turns around and just stares the fish right in the face. Yep. And that's exactly when this guy hit. Insane. So freaking cool. Four something. Maybe. I don't know. He's even so. four pounders are starting think... to feel a little light. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's hilarious. That fish was not going anywhere though. There we go. Is it doing its thing? Four pound, 12 ounce. Four and three quarters. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, I don't know. Let's keep going. Got it. Let you be on your way, sir. That green pumpkin woo weight is looking just like the grass it's going through. That's cool. Braid lettuce getting us another. With that popping purple in there. Pretty sick color. Oh, oh wow in like 30 seconds. There we go. First one in a while. We're running. Yeah, All right, there we go. T-Rig in the shallows. Another one in the books. Threw around those jackal gantrells for a while and stuff had slowed down a bit y'all so we are back on the t-rig so i took off the jackal gantrell jr and check this out instead of putting it right back in our tackle box what we're going to do is we're actually going to hang these guys right here for just a minute we're going to let those things air dry so you don't have to do this all the time but certainly if you just grab those things untie them put them back in your box with a lot of your hard plastics and those other treble hooks and stuff like we have this big swim bait box it'll cause some of your other baits to start rusting and lasting uh less time than they would if you would just let your stuff air dry so let your gear air dry before you toss them back in there sometimes I know I've heard it before in some videos but I don't hear it too often so maybe that's something you've never uh, been told before yeah yeah oh no oh, oh, oh. not good not good that was a fish yeah. that has her on the tree you got it keep it tight he might be off still oh you still see him swirling watch it be big it would be funny if it's big. It's probably a pound, but just in case. What if it's huge? Keep your line tight. Keep that rod angled down a little bit in case it takes off and doesn't. Oh man, does this fish still on? It was. It swam her right into that tree. I watched the whole thing. Oh, gotcha. You got him. 
Hey, bud. Nice. <laughs> Jeez. <Yeah>. Net. <laughs> Almost needed the net on that one. We changed directions. Yeah, we've gone from bigs to smalls, y'all. Ah! All right. Oh, and there he goes. Wait, He's going to swim off in a second. What the heck? Guys, look what I found. It's the teensiest, tiniest soft shell turtle I have ever seen. Should Maybe all of you guys have ever pass. seen. This guy is huh? tiny, he's so cool. He was just chilling on top of the moss whenever we were getting the boat close enough to the ramp. We snuck over and I scooped him up. Anyways guys, we're gonna go ahead and let him go. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the Texas rigs and swim baits. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.